In this video, we're going to add a feature to access the USB-C connector in our plastic housing. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to carry on with our now solid body housing, and we want to add a bit more detail to make sure that we can access the USB-C connector. Now, this is a little tricky because we can't actually see it. So we wanna make sure that we add inspect, section analysis, and we create a section analysis on this plane, and this will allow us to see through the housing. However, when we start a new sketch, and we start a new sketch on the top plane, we also wanna make sure that we can see through in this case. And if we use slice, we're not able to see anything because the USB-C connector is not on our sketch plane. So a couple things that we can do is we can change the opacity of the solid body. So we can right click on it, go to opacity control, and we can kick it down to something a bit lower, but you'll notice that it doesn't actually work when we're inside of this component. So if we go back to opacity control and go to 100% and we try this again at the very top level, let's say to 30%, now you can see down through. So sometimes when we're editing or we're working on a specific body in a component, we have to take the entire component and change the opacity. Another option that we could use temporarily is, let's go ahead and set this back to 100%. We could change our view or our display settings to the visual style for wireframe. So the wireframe will let us see through everything and this gives us a good idea where that USB-C connector is. So as we're incorporating this into our housing, we need to think about functionality and we need to make sure that we can plug into the USB-C connector. This will give us the ability to reprogram the device without having to disassemble it. So for this, what I wanna do is I wanna just create a simple cut and I'm gonna taper it away and I'm gonna make sure that I have it wide enough to account for a connector. So what I wanna do first is I'm gonna use project include and I wanna project and I just wanna bring one of these edges that's part of this. And you'll notice that when I do this, it's clicking a face. So I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button and I'm gonna select the edge and I'm gonna say, okay. So now I have that front edge as a reference. We could go a little bit behind it. We could go away from it. Kind of just depends on your preference. USB-Cs are pretty easy to plug in because they can be flipped upside down unlike older USB connectors. So this really is gonna be fine for us to plug in, but we need to make sure that we have enough space for a connector. So using our line tool, I'm just gonna come out to the right and I'm gonna taper this away from the housing and I'm gonna come back down and come back over here. This should give us a complete close profile. I wanna make sure that the angle using D on the keyboard is gonna be the same on both sides. I'll make this 100 degrees this direction and I'm gonna make it the same over here by selecting that first dimension. Then I also wanna make sure that I dimension the distance away. I'm gonna give this five millimeters, then I'm gonna use equal. Again, minimizing the number of dimensions that we have to change if we do need to update something. Then this section here isn't really important, but I do wanna make sure that it is at least controlled. And I'm just gonna make it 18 millimeters, something that goes way outside the housing. Then I'm gonna use control or command and six on the keyboard or reset to shaded with visible edges only. So now I have this extruded feature, or at least this closed profile that I can use for an extrude. We're gonna finish the sketch and temporarily I wanna hide this body. The reason I wanna do this is because I wanna extrude that profile, but I wanna start from the surface of this cutie pie or this microcontroller. So the start plane is going to be from object. I'm gonna just select that top plane and then I wanna pull my arrow up. Right now, we could use this as an extrude. If we brought back our solid body, we could remove it, but I'm gonna actually create this as a solid body for right now, and I'm gonna show you why in just a minute. We'll say, okay, we're gonna hide our electronics housing, and we're gonna bring back this original body here. So this is another technique that we can use from time to time, and that's gonna be for us to create what's considered a, a tool body, something that we're gonna use as a cut or an intersection. And part of the reason I did this is because now we can see that that microcontroller is not centered on our housing. Now, that doesn't necessarily matter. We could uh, just simply work with it being offset, but if we really want symmetry, then what we can do is we can adjust the shape, making sure that we have enough of a gap or enough of a clearance to account for it. 
So what I can do at this point is I can modify the sketch now that I know exactly where it fits on my housing. And I can get rid of this equal constraint. So we wanna go back and delete that. And then I wanna pull this over. And then I wanna take this one, I'm gonna delete that dimension and pull this over. And what I'm looking to do is I'm actually going to project this edge and this edge here. I'll select both of them, hit create, project include, project, or P on the keyboard. And then I'm gonna create a tangency condition between that and this selected edge. And you'll notice that it's not letting me do that. Another way that we can get around this is by temporarily faking it by adding a point to each of these lines and then making those points coincident with our projected edge. Now you'll notice what ends up happening if we hit escape is it pulls it along and it doesn't necessarily put it exactly where we want it, but it's okay. It's just a temporary trick that we're gonna use, make that consistent. And again, you'll notice that it didn't really work on this side. That, that point wasn't attached to this line. So we're gonna use Control and Z. We're gonna make sure that that can move over. And you can see here that it's not really working. So what I'm gonna do in this case, instead of snapping those, I'm gonna use Control and Z and undo. And now I wanna control this with a dimension. So I wanna say it needs to be at least this far away from this edge. So I'm gonna use D on the keyboard and I'm gonna just create a horizontal dimension. So we'll right click, set it to horizontal. I'm gonna give it a 0 0.05 millimeter. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, just between these two points, right click, make sure it's a horizontal dimension. I'm gonna set them the same. And now you can see that it's still underdefined. Now, if we hit escape and we try to manipulate these around, you can see that there's no height reference. It's making sure that that point is always horizontally offset from that, but it's not really accounting for the height. So we wanna make sure that these two points are horizontal. That allows us to only control one with a dimension. So I'm gonna pick one and I'm gonna make a vertical dimension of two and a quarter. Now these numbers don't really mean anything. They're just visual values. They're using them to get, to get this thing visually in the right spot. We're gonna finish the sketch, we'll hide it. And now you can see here, it looks a little bit better. It doesn't go past that filleted edge and we've got this sort of block shape. So at this stage, I wanna to continue to work on my tool body. So we're gonna grab the edges that we wanna fill it. So I wanna fill it these edges and I'm gonna make sure there are at least two. So I'm gonna say 2.5, see what that looks like. Looks okay, but I wanna go a little bit bigger. Let's say three millimeters and say, okay. I'm gonna repeat the process on the bottom edge. And this time I'm gonna give it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna say five millimeters give it a nice general transition, say okay. And then I wanna use combine. So in this case, I'm going to cut. My target body is gonna be the main housing. The tool body will be this. And we can see a preview on the screen. We can also keep that tool if we think we need it for something else later. I'm just gonna say okay. And now what I've done was I've removed that. And again, if we take a look at the opacity, we'll go ahead and change this to 40 and we bring back our circuit board, what we should see is that the USB, it's not centered here, but we still have enough room where we can create a cutout or an opening in our housing and we can plug in. So again, I'm gonna go back and readjust my opacity back to 100%. And I wanna to try to smooth out this transition. So F on the keyboard, fill it. And this is where it's gonna get a little tricky. So you can see here at some point, it's going to begin blending into this other geometry. And that's okay, that's fine. We're gonna go up to three millimeters and it looks okay. It looks like it does a pretty good job. Obviously we can tighten up these corners, but keep in mind that we wanna be mindful of offsetting this. So at this point, I think that looks pretty good. So the next step for me is to split this up into multiple bodies. So I wanna create a sketch. I'm gonna use my XZ plane. And I'm gonna project this point, again, P on the keyboard, or we can go here, project include, hit enter to accept it. Then I wanna create a horizontal line. And I wanna make sure that this horizontal line has a midpoint constraint with that. Then D on the keyboard to dimension this. Now, I know a lot of people don't like to use shortcut keys or it's hard to use shortcut keys when you're not extremely familiar with uh, software but there are a handful that are extremely important in, in any software. Things like being able to get to the dimension tool quickly rather than going all the way up to the toolbar and back down, those are gonna be extremely handy. Now we wanna use split body, which by default is at the top level of this modify, the body to split, the splitting tool, we're gonna to allow it to extend, we're gonna say okay, 
And now we should have a top and a bottom. So I'm going to rename this bottom housing, and we're going to rename this one top housing. So now it's going to get a little tricky because this is the point in which we need to shell this to a consistent wall thickness. We're done adding all of our little features. We're going to have openings for connectors and cables, but for the most part, we're, we're pretty close. So I'm going to say shell. I'm going to select this face, and I'm going to use W for wall thickness. And we should see a two millimeter wall being created. Now here's another potential issue that happens when we have these curvature continuity type designs. You see that the, the blend on the inside did not work. So we don't have that smooth transition. And if we take a look at a section analysis, one thing that we're gonna see if we view this from the right hand side is we have a sharp corner. That sharp corner is not gonna be a good solution for us. We really want a consistent wall thickness and we wanna blend it. There are a couple different ways that we can do this. One way is we can offset the outside surface in three millimeters and see what we get. So that's the first thing I'm gonna try. I'm gonna to go to create, offset. I'm just gonna select one of these, turn off chain selection, and then we're gonna bring it in a distance of whatever our wall thickness is. In this case, two millimeters. When we do that, you'll notice that I'm not really seeing anything. So again, we can do minus and W for wall thickness to make sure we're using that exact value. When we say okay, we see a surface here, but if I hide this, you'll notice that the surface is again, that sort of squared off corner. It is not doing a good job of offsetting that. So I'm gonna delete it, bring back our bottom housing. And when we're inside of our surface tools, one thing that we can actually do is we can come through, we can select faces, and we have the ability to delete them. When we're doing this with the solid tools active, Fusion actually tries to patch it and maintain a solid body. But when we're doing it with the surface tools active, if we go to modify and delete or delete on the keyboard, it actually turns these into surface bodies. So we have to do the same thing on the other side of the housing, or we can split the entire thing in half. So that's probably a better option to just split the whole thing in half. So we can use trim. This is our trim tool, and I wanna get rid of everything on that left side. But one thing you'll notice that happened is that that trim actually looked like it was offset. Let's bring the origin back, and it looks okay. Everything looks okay, but the preview of it for some reason looked like it was offset. But now we go through the same process of creating these manually. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loft. We're gonna go from here to here. Now remember on the outside, if we use curvature continuity, we wanna make sure that we maintain that. If we use tangency, then we wanna do that as well. Repeat that. This time I'm gonna go from both of these edges down to these two edges. And again, curvature continuity. Because we do have symmetry, we could just work in this corner and we could mirror those across. And that'll save us a little bit of time. The corners are gonna be the tricky ones because again, we've been having issues with the surface tools where it doesn't like us to carry that continuity around the corner. So if I say curvature continuity here and here, everything looks okay. If I try tangency in the corner, you can see that that preview failed. It does not like it because it has conflicting inputs. We try to use curvature continuity in the corners. You can see that it's not working here either. We can try to use patch, but honestly, that's probably not gonna work either. Instead of enable chaining, I'm gonna make sure that I manually add these to selections. And if that doesn't work, one thing that we can do is we can stitch them together, make sure that we clean up any gaps. But for the purposes of this, I don't wanna to get too bogged down on all these minute details. If this is really important, if you plan to create a lot of surfacing uh, parts or designs, then we can go back and we can cover it in a more in-depth surfacing course. But I do wanna keep progressing with this design. So I'm just gonna use curvature continuity on the top and the bottom. Then I'm gonna mirror them. So mirror, this time we can say bodies because we haven't stitched them together. If you had stitched them together, you wanna to use faces. The mirror plane will be the middle. And then I wanna stitch these all together. So the outside, each of those blends that we created, make sure we grab these ones down in the corner and then we'll say okay. And then we wanna mirror this thing across. And this is another benefit of making sure that we work with symmetry is if we run into these problems, we can hack it back down and we can use symmetry to make our job easier because we only have to work on half or a quarter of the design. So now we're back to a solid body. If we bring back our section analysis, then you can see now we've got that nice blended inside corner. 
And again, we're looking for consistent wall thickness, and that's the reason why we don't want to put a sharp corner there. Sharp corners are also considered stress risers, so they could be a potential failure point in a design. So we want to avoid them, at least on those internal corners. They're going to be okay here, but it's not going to be great on the inside. We want to make sure that we avoid that. So now we've got the bottom, we have to deal with the top. Now before we do this, let's go ahead and save because I already know that if we save this, it's going to be, um, uh, it's gonna potentially be a problem when we try to offset or shell this other geometry. Now, for some reason, it's trying to save it. Uh, I'm gonna hit cancel, it looks like it's still saving. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Solid, shell, we're going to select this, and before I have two millimeters, I'm gonna manually start with one millimeter and see if I get a preview. If it won't do one millimeter, it's certainly not gonna do two millimeters. So one looks okay. We made sure that all of our fillets were big enough that we could, uh, we could use a larger value. So that looks okay. So I'm gonna use W for wall thickness, which will take us to two millimeters. These fillets are gonna almost disappear. Remember those were three millimeters and uh, they're gonna get just pretty small there. So that looks okay. We have a complete inside, that looks, uh, that looks pretty good. We're gonna say okay there. And if we bring back our section analysis, what we should see is a consistent wall thickness. So let's take a look at this. All right, so if we view this from the right, I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna bring back the other body. So now what we have is a consistent wall thickness. If we bring back our electronics design, the only thing overlapping is that USB-C, but that's okay because we're gonna cut that out. We're gonna have an opening there. And everything else looks okay. We still need to obviously have some hardware to hold it together. We need to add a, a lip and groove to make sure that we can align both pieces of the housing. We need to talk about adding a reveal, a small gap here. And we also need to figure out some way to hold the circuit board. All right, so these are all things that we still need to talk about and consider, but we've done quite a bit of work to this point. We, we have a design and we had a couple challenges along the way. Some things I halfway expected and some things I didn't. Some things threw me for a loop. But I think one, one really important takeaway of something like this is you need to be able to be flexible and you need to change your design direction or at least the tools that you're using for your design direction to accommodate for any potential errors or issues that come up. We could have used some harder edges in a lot of places. We could have shelled this before we added things like fillets. And obviously we could have just made this a box. We could have gone the easy route and we could have had the bottom be completely flat. We could have had the top be completely flat. But those are, you know, those are design decisions that you have to make. And sometimes aesthetically that just doesn't work. If we get rid of our edges just visually, you can see that this looks pretty cool. I mean, obviously we could do we could do some more work. I don't think that you can never be 100% happy with the design. If you can do more, then sometimes you just want to. But we have the little grooves for zip ties, so we know that we can hold this thing down. If the housing is gonna get glued or epoxy together, if this is sort of a, a one and done, then we can actually get away without having hardware. This is supposed to be sealed for some reason. Uh, but we are gonna talk about adding hardware. We still wanna put those in the corners, talk about that. But so far, I'm pretty happy. So at this point in the design, if you've made it this far, uh, and if you've made any design changes or decisions, things that we did differently, uh, then make sure you let me know in the comments. I'm curious if you had similar problems that I did, or if you made any changes or differences in your design and did not have the problems. It's always helpful information. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.